Hey, everybody, it's Ron Johnson, and this is the Ron Johnson Show on Locked On Sports Minnesota. Uh, in tough times, sometimes tough things have to be talked about. And on today's show, I do want to talk about Kyrie Jackson, what happened, um, how we as a people uh, can can avoid situations like this. But we'll talk about all that and much more. But also, Anthony Edwards, the USA team, we have to discuss what this guy is doing. I mean, he is – Anthony Edwards is doing something that the entire world is about to see. But we'll see if it comes true or not. We'll talk about that and much more coming up next on the Ron Johnson Show. Locked on Sports Minnesota Podcasts. It's endless Minnesota Vikings talk with the diverse voices of your local experts. Now the Ron Johnson Show. On the field, in the broadcast booth, Ron Johnson is Minnesota sports. He's played with them, hung out with them, and grown up with all the big names in Minnesota sports. They're hanging out with Ron Johnson. It's the Ron Johnson Show on the Locked On Sports Minnesota podcast. And it starts now. Hey, everybody, it's Ron Johnson, and this is the Ron Johnson Show on Locked On Sports Minnesota. I want to thank everybody for watching us on YouTube, those tuning in on Amazon Fire, on Roku, whatever the device you're losing. If you're on Sirius XM, thank you. But for those that are watching on the YouTube video, as you see, I'm wearing uh, the black polo. Um, it's kind of fitting for today. We are going to have to talk about Kyrie Jackson. Sometimes, you know, the tough things have to be discussed in sports. You don't, these are not the fun times of sports. There's always things that happen throughout a season. I mean, I've been doing this for 10 years now with the Minnesota Vikings, and I've seen a lot happen uh, with this with this organization. And uh, this this is just one of those things we have to talk about. So before I bring my producer to the show, we will talk about that. We also are going to talk about Anthony Edwards and his USA team as they go for gold. There's some things Anthony Edwards recently said, and we'll see what you guys think about it. But I want everybody to know today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. As the playoffs wind down, the sports stop sporting like we want them to. But this summer, FanDuel is hooking all customers with a boost, hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right, people, daily. There's something for everyone, every day, all summer long, all summer long, people. You don't want to miss this offer. It's a boost or a bonus. Just visit FanDuel.com backslash locked on to get started. That's FanDuel.com backslash locked on. Well, as I bring my producer to the show, Sam Maxim, uh, and again, those that are watching on YouTube, please make sure you subscribe. Like if you're on there, just hit the subscribe button. If this video, if you've gotten to it from Twitter, Instagram, whatever it might be, but you ended up on YouTube, make sure you're on your phone, just hit subscribe. It, it'll give you all of our shows, all of our updates as we go. But, oh man, this is the tough ones that we have to deal with every once in a while. Um, since those things happen. And for those that know, Kyrie Jackson uh, this past weekend was killed uh, with two of his former high school teammates. And these guys were college athletes as well. Um, we don't know the whole story, so I didn't want to get into that. But what I do want to talk about is people, first of all, make the right decisions. Like, as I know, like I, everybody I saw, we, I was in a golf tournament, um, this week and I got a chance to see Garrett Bradbury and, and Brian O'Neill and, and Kyle Rudolph and Max Williams and so on and so forth. And as people were, you know, everybody kind of said like, man, this, you know, so I saw Gabe Henderson and Martin Nance. Um, so, you know, a lot of the Vikings people and everybody kind of had the same thing. Like, man, I can't believe this happened. And then the second part was, man, like I wish people would do the right thing. And 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 nobody really wanted to get into the to the talk talk of it. Nobody like it that's as far as we went. Like, man, that sucks. Like, man, I can't believe this happened. Or but when you think about what could have transpired, you know, how the people in the other cars that created the accident could have maybe gotten out of the situation. I know I've done things that probably aren't always right, but we've got to do better because it's not only did three people lose their lives, the person that caused it walked away, walked away. And now their life is probably going to be ruined once this all mm -hmm. comes out and figures out what happened. Yep. And so it's just, it's just not worth it sometimes, Sam. And, and so when, you know, when you first heard the news, what was kind of the first thing that, that popped into your head or came to mind with you? Um, stunned. So I was not plugged in on Twitter. I didn't see it as it happened. I got the release from the Vikings on Saturday morning. So I think it probably had been out there for half an hour at that point or an hour. I got the email and it's never good news when you get an email from the team, you know, Jeff Anderson, the, the communications um, VP sends it out. You know, it's bad news um, on a Saturday morning. And then to, to read, you know, Kyrie Jackson dies in a, in a car accident, just 
floored and didn't know the detail, hadn't read the police report at that point. And I just thought, I initially thought, oh my goodness, like, yeah, please don't be a Jordan Addison situation where right. like, you know, where he was, where he was making a, a decision like that, um, like last year. And, and then you read the details and you say, my gosh, like, I mean, there, there's no, there, there's just no fathoming what that's like to get that news. If you're a, a loved one, a teammate, a family member, I've got two kids that'll be driving in, you know, 12, 13 years. And I, I'm at the point where I'm like, Hey, let's just get robot cars. Like we shouldn't even get behind the wheel if we can't trust ourselves to make the right decisions. Um, you know, with alcohol likely involved in this, in this incident with Kyrie Jackson, um, just horrible. I, uh, I was pretty stunned Saturday morning when I got that news. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. And, and, and that's where I, I feel the same thing. Like my daughter is 13. So I just realized in two years, she's going to be driving. Like in two years, she will, I mean, she's already gotten behind the wheel with us in the car just to go like out of the driveway, just to see how she can control a car. Um, and you know, we were in Detroit this past weekend and, and she got a chance to do that as well in Detroit with my mom. And then I thought about, I'm like, man, in three years, we're going to have to let her go on her own you know, mm-hmm. go to the store, go some, And it's just one of those things where you just, you just don't know what you possibly can do or how you can handle that. And so when you think about that, when you think about where is going, what's going to happen, what's next, like the team has to move on. And, and so the team is going to, you know, they're going to have to figure out a way. Cause they're going to, you know, guys are probably going to want to fly down maybe to his funeral. Um, guys are going to want to, you know, figure out the storyline, what happened, how did it happen? Um, but at the end of the day, like I, I hope a lot of people's hearts are changed and the decisions they make. You know, if you've had one too many, do you get behind the wheel? No. If you've if you've done this, do you, should you probably call an Uber? Yes. Should you maybe just get a hotel and stay where you're at downtown or wherever you might be? Yeah. Um, because at the end of the day, spending 100 to 150 bucks to get somewhere safe versus not and saving that money and not making it home. I, you know, it's just tough. And, and, and for, you know, Isaiah Hazel was another guy in the car. And then you also had, uh, uh, Anthony, uh, Litton was in the car as well Two, Like I said, two of his former high school teammates, uh, also went off to college to play football. Those are three young men that their lives are never coming back. Like it's, it's not like it, it, it felt like, it, and again, I, I was the same way saying when I first saw the original, you know, like dies in the car, I said, I'm like, Oh my goodness. I'm like, uh, you know, and it sucks to say, I hope he wasn't driving, but it's one of those things where you're like, man, cause there's so much more that comes with that, you know, where we're now people are like, you know, you think about the, the chiefs guys that, you know, their drag race and all the stuff they did. And now they're being sued for stuff and they're, they're liable for stuff. And you look at Henry Ruggs, you know, going to jail after killing somebody. Like it's, it's one of those things where it's like, I, I wish people would see one thing happen and they will learn, but it doesn't. Cause even today, I saw an accident, you know, I saw an accident on the road and me too, you know, was me too. I saw one today. Attention. Yeah. Um, it's crazy, you know, and, and it was like, I mean, fire trucks came out there. Gasoline was all in Cause one of the cars whole front side was total and gas was leaking out. And so they had to come out and do the deal to make sure it doesn't catch fire. And so, you know, at first I know in the past when traffic backs up, I would, you know, I'd be like, man, like, can I, and I did ask, like, when I, I'm not going to lie, when I got up to the front, towards the front, I was asking the, the mm-hmm. fire guy and the police are like, Hey, can I just turn right? Or, you know, am I, am I supposed to turn around and get, cause it was a median. So I would have had to like drive over the median a little bit to go the other way to get mm-hmm. back on the highway and exit at the next exit. And then it, after a while I was just like, you know what, let me just sit here, you know? Cause I'm like, one, my daughter's in the car. I'm like, we're not in a rush. I'm like, let me just sit here because these two people are not going to go home right away. They have to go to the hospital, whatever has to do. I'm able to just make a right turn five minutes from now after the fire department has cleared the scene and made sure the gas is not, you know, going to explode. Um, and, you know, and that's, that's when I sat back. Cause I'm like, even if I like, I'm like, what if I rush myself and I drive close and all of a sudden the car explodes as I'm driving by, like, then I'll be looking back like, man, wh- why didn't I just wait? And so that's why I just sat there and waited. I waited, I waited for the fire department to clear the mm-hmm. scene and tell us we were good to go. So that was that was my thought when I when I had the whole deal set up and the way it was looking. Um, but you know, I and, and again I tweeted about it too. I kind of tweeted like I'm I'm sorry for complaining about stuff because life is short and complaining about stuff is not really worth it. You know, it's not worth the 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 headache and all the stuff when there's you know lives are lost. You know, and we 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 have it so nice and so well and we're so blessed. Sometimes we complain about dumb stuff. And so, you know, somebody did say like, man, like the jokes are funny though, man. Don't, you know, don't lose that. And I'm like, yeah, I get that. But at the same time, I'm I put in perspective sometimes where like little things irritate me. And I'm like, you know what? It could be worse. 
you know, I, I could be, you know, dead or somebody in my family could have been dead immediately. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we, we've seen this, we've seen, you know, players, you know, all the way back to Corey Stringer, you know, we've seen these stories and things happen. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Gladney. Field. Yeah. Jeff Gladney. Not, not on too the long ago. The field. And so uh, it's tough. And, and, and I saw Cam Dantzler tweet that, like, you know, he's like, I know that feeling. Cause he was, you know, Jeff Gladney was his, his, his draft mate, his teammate, his, his mm-hmm. roommate with, 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 as far as being uh, in the room for DBs, not roommate. Like, I don't know if they stayed together during training camp, but just his, his roommate, as far as DB, the DB room. And he's like, I remember that happening. And so, you know, it, it's another tough situation. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I think th- if some good comes out of it, I hope it's that players learn that there's other ways to get home when it doesn't seem like the right situation. Like go get a, you know, buy rooms for the group, you know, write it off, do whatever you got to do, but getting behind a wheel. And again, these guys didn't like this was, this was called by somebody else, but, but still, you know, just, just be safe. Cause you don't know three, four in the morning, it's other idiots out there. And now, you know, and that's why I try to tell my daughter, I'm like, well, you drive, it's not just you. You got to watch the idiot to the right and the idiot to the left sometimes because they might not be paying attention. They might be in a rush trying to cut you off because they're mad. They're stuck behind another car. And mm-hmm. that's how some of these accidents happen. I see it all the time in, in, in rush hour where guys are zooming up to get, and I'm like, dude, you zoomed up to get one car in front of me and you're going to be with me for the next 15 minutes in traffic. Why? Just wait, just stay behind me. Let us merge. So there's no like, and and so now it like, again, the, all that little stuff just puts in perspective about it. Like even speeding, you know, like after that, I'm like, why? Like, there's no purpose. Like it gets you what? Two minutes faster, a minute faster, you know, like just, mm-hmm. just go to speed limit. You, you'll get there. Plan ahead, you know, drive, drive like, Hey, but you know, I don't want to waste too much time on that. I, I do want to say prayers up to, to, to Kyrie Jackson, his family. I know it's a tough time. I know, you know, when you lose somebody in your family, especially at that age, like that's, that's just hard. Uh, older, you know, eighties, nineties, like you kind of prepare for that, but at the age in your twenties, you're not prepared for that. And so I know that's just something tough and it's going to, it's going to be with them. And, you know, and I, I wouldn't wish that on anybody. Um, but you know, we, we, we do have to move on to the next topic. Um, I, I'm pretty sure there'll be more that comes out. And as that does, you know, if it's worth covering, if it makes sense to cover it, maybe we will. Um, if not, you know, we'll let, we'll let it rest and just, you know, like pray that, you know, he, he gets through this, the team gets through this and his teammates that were close to him get through this. Uh, cause it affects a lot of people. It affects a lot of people. Yeah. It has nothing to do with football. It just affects a lot of people in different ways because it puts your life into perspective. Uh, but coming up next, we're going to talk about Anthony Edwards because this guy got on a big time interview in front of the whole world and he kind of declared who he is in the hierarchy of the Olympics team. Um, and a lot of people from Minnesota aren't shocked, I'm pretty sure. But the world is kind of like, wait, what? Like, do you know who who's on your team? Do you know what you're saying right now? So I, I, I love it. I will talk about what that looks like and who it sounds like coming up next on the Ron Johnson show. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Ron told you about it in the open. We love sports. We love hockey, but it's over now. We love basketball, but it's over until the Olympics. And we love football, and that starts pretty soon. But the sports are winding down. They're not sportsing like we want them to. FanDuel, though, with the sports that are going on, uh, is keeping the vibes alive. All you have to do is open the app, dream up bets anytime you're in the mood with a boost or a bonus for all customers daily. That's right. Something for everyone every day, all summer long, whether that's MLB, WNBA, or the Olympics coming up. FanDuel.com. Start making the most out of your summer. Bet the Twins. Bet the Lynx at FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Well, <laughs> Anthony, Anthony Edwards, Anthony, Cleophis, Travail, Edwards, like mm-hmm. this guy. So, so for those that don't know, Anthony Edwards was asked a question about the Olympic team and, you know, how he fits in. And he's like, fit in. They got to fit in with me. He's like, I'm still number one. I'm still to go to like you go through me. The, the team goes through me. And there's a team that's going through him with LeBron James, Stephen Curry. Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, uh, Anthony Davis. I mean, the list goes on. Now, Curry? Get, Did you mention Curry? Yeah, Curry. Stephen Curry oh, yeah. was the first. Yep. yep. Uh, okay. Stephen Curry to me is like, I mean, you got LeBron, then you got Steph, then you got KD. And then you buy have Anthony Edwards. 
that's just my opinion because I grew up watching, not grew up, sorry, they're all younger than me, but I've, as I've been in basketball, I've watched these guys come up through the league. And yes, LeBron's a little bit older, doesn't have the step he used to have. Uh, Steph Curry's a little bit older, doesn't have the step, step. You know, Kevin Durant's a little bit older. And so for Anthony Edwards, I get it because when you beat the Lakers and LeBron, when you beat the, uh, the Suns with Devin Booker and, and Kevin Durant and Chris Paul, like in his mind, he's like, I'm the new sheriff in town. There's nobody on this team that that, that has beat me. Like the Mavericks, Luca and Ky- Kyrie's on the team. Luca's for a different country that well, I think was eliminated, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and yeah, he was by Giannis. Giannis eliminated yeah. Luca's team. So when you think about that, when you think about where Anthony Edwards' mind is, I get it. And I know you mentioned there was a tweet. Um, I saw the video as well. And somebody was like, this is a Jordan-esque type of moment and because i remember him telling steve kerr that too before like this remember this happened before I don't, I'm, was it like the maybe the just the uh world games or something FIBA, where, FIBA world championships yeah yeah where he asked him like something about where should he play or whatever and steve kerr's like yeah you're gonna come off the bench and he was like something like why would you have your best player on the bench you know basically and steve kerr's like yeah you're not better than any kind of you know you're not better than steph clay and he's like who, who who's not better than them and so in in this is where i go with this sound if you were to play one on one and it was Steph Curry versus Anthony Edwards. Now, granted, shooting three, Steph got it, but Anthony Edwards can guard him. Steph can't guard Anthony Edwards. So that's one. I get that. Mm-hmm. LeBron can't move as quick as Anthony Edwards can anymore. Like he can move him around. Now, he can't guard LeBron probably in the post, but I think he's strong enough. I don't know about the reach though, 6'8 six, versus 6'6, six, six, but. I don't know. Kevin Durant's the one where we did see him go head to head in an actual game and Anthony Edwards had his way with him. Devin Booker, same thing. And so I kind of understand. I kind of understand where he's going with this. Like he he's faced the Giants and he slayed them. So in his mind, he's like, no, they got to fit with me. You got to come to me. So when you heard that, I know you talked about the tweet. Like, do yeah. you do you believe he should be the number one option for the for the Olympic team? I, I'm super interested to see how, how it happens um, because – when you think about the end of the game, right? So, so let's let's just go fast forward to the fourth quarter. Mm-hmm. Who's going to be the guy? Um, it's got to be someone who can, you know, operate on ball, and that certainly is Ant. That also certainly is LeBron. Um, Steph is the best shooter of all time, um, and you know, Jason Tatum too. Jason Tatum just won a title. Don't forget about him. Like I. It might have to be finisher by committee. I don't know if you can pick a guy, Ron. Who? How can you pick a guy out of that group? But I think Ant certainly has the charisma, the moxie. If he gets the ball, he's going to put his head down and take the shot. He's not going to be shy about asserting himself in those spots. Right, yeah. And so that's the thing. He's not shy. We know that. He's not a shy guy. He's not a guy that's going to be worried about, like, do they, you know, if I miss, do I care? Like he does it. And this is, this has nothing to do with the NBA. This has nothing to do with him getting paid. He also knows, and this is probably the most comfortable he's going to be. And what we, and what we, maybe we haven't seen this, like Michael Jordan with Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, uh, you know, all those guys in the dream team, you have the freedom to just go out and ball out because if you are not making shots, somebody else will like the chances. And we know in the past, there was some times where the USA team did not come out and play their best. But I also think it was a mindset of like, well, we're better than everybody in the world. So we're just going to get here and we can like the dream team did it. We'll do it. And then they got embarrassed. I don't think that's happening right now because now the NBA is full of international players and these international players have joined up and they're playing for their countries. When you look at Giannis, when you look at, cause I, you know, I've, I'm pretty sure you've seen the Kobe Bryant versus Paul Gasol story where they were like, you know, Kobe Bryant said, Hey, the first play of the game, yeah. they're going to set a double screen and I'm running through, uh, I'm running through, uh, what's his name's chest. Uh, Paul Gasol. And you know, you saw it. Everybody's like, what? No, you're not. That, that's your boy. That's your teammate. You guys play for the Lakers. Like you got to go win a championship together. Like you're, and they, you know, and I saw Chris Bosch's face was the funniest. Cause he's like, yeah, first play of the game. They do, they do it. Like Kobe knows, which and I always wondered this. I'm like, that's that's the type of guy Kobe. Kobe knew the international play. Like, like, how do you know what they're about to run? And whether this is one of those stories that Kobe later told them, or they may, you know, like he came back and said, I knew they were gonna do that. So I, I ran the ball. And like, who knows how it actually happened? But the fact that he knew and he said, Look, I'm running through his stuff, you know, he ran through Paul Gasol, 
Paul Gasol looks at him and kind of like, well, yeah, that's Kobe. I know how he, you know, it wasn't no fight. It wasn't no jump up. And I can't believe, you know, because like today's NBA, you do that, it ends up probably in a brouhaha and they got to clean, you know, mm-hmm. everybody's got to get held back. Paul Gasol got to get up like, all right, yeah, I know that's Kobe. And the rest of the team is like, oh, this this dude ain't playing. If he were, if he wasn't to run through his bro, his teammate, his best friend, you know, his God, the godfather of one of his kids, what, what would he do? Like, what? Like, and so after that, they were like, we're not losing. We're not losing. We got Kobe. And I think that's where Anthony Edwards is trying to set that. He's trying to set the bar to say, I'm not coming to Paris to get embarrassed. I'm coming to Paris to win a gold. And so that means it's coming through me because I've seen you point to Devin Booker, shut down and get lost, you know, and lose. I've seen you, Kevin Durant, miss some shots. I've seen you get hot too, though. But the one thing ain't none of y'all ever done will stop me. And I think that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to be the alpha. And Michael Jordan was the alpha of his team. Anthony Edwards, I think he's just trying to set that alpha tone and say, look, I'm the alpha. I'm number one. Like, but that's, that's him. Like, I, you know, I don't know if you saw the meme about like, well, who's going to be the first person to trash talk Bronny. And they were like, the, the trash talk would be something like, man, you wouldn't even be out here without your daddy. And the candidates, did you see the candidates, the top three candidates who they think will say it to, to Bronny? Uh, Ant's got to be in three. Ant um, was one. Yep. Devin Booker, maybe. No, no. He was another, Ooh. another Timberwolf, former, former Timberwolf. Former Timberwolf. On he's the an roster? agitator. No. Oh, some an international guy? No, no. He's a he's a guy that played for the Timberwolves. He went to the Bucks. He jumped on the table and cried when they won the play in. Oh, oh, Bev. Oh, this is yeah. in like regular season. Correct. This is NBA. NBA. All right. NBA. Yeah. So NBA to go to Bronny and say, you know, you would like once the season starts oh. in the NBA, like who who would be the guys? And they pick the top three guys in the NBA that are gonna like have no problem talking trash to Bronny. Which is Anthony Edwards. It was Pat Beverly, and I forgot who the third one. I think the third one was. It wasn't Draymond. Um, the third one kind of was like, man, y'all just throwing this out there. I can't remember who the third one was, but the third one was one where I was like, oh, that's a reach. I don't know if that guy's that. I think it's it's Anthony Edwards. Oh no, it was. It was Dylan Brooks. It was Dylan Brooks because oh, okay. yeah, like he, agitator. He, he's a jerk and he's an agitator as well. So th- those do make sense though. But I can see Anthony Edwards kind of lightheartedly doing it, especially if Brody actually hits a shot and says something to him, I can see him like, oh, really? Okay, let me embarrass you in front of your daddy. You know, <laughs> and then like saying something to his daddy, like, you better get him off me because I'm about to kill your son. You know, like I, I like Anthony Edwards is that guy. But I mean, with, with him being the number I personally believe, I think he should be. I mean, but I, I did say this when I, when I, because I talked to, I was talking to Blake Harfarver, I talked to Jamal Bushamala, and I was talking about what Anthony Edwards can do with a group of guys like this that he's, he's never, he's never had, a guy like Steph Curry, a guy that if you give him an inch of space, he's knocking the three down. If he's on, now we know Steph's had some cold nights, but if he's on, because because Clay didn't make it right, Clay is not on the team. That's what I thought. So it's just Steph and his Devin Booker. So if you think about, you could have Kevin Durant on one wing, you could have Steph on the other wing, you could have LeBron. Like. You can't double Anthony. So now with all that international space, because they can't, you know, international league, you can't do all the NBA type stuff. You can't double team. You can't, you know, you can sit in the lane a little bit, but now you're leaving three point shooters and the three point line for international. I don't know if you know if you saw that the NBA is like 23 point something it's short. It's short. The international is 22. So yeah. that means Steph is shooting like his step inside the arc jumper that he hits all the time. Now that's three points for him. So I just watched a video of them practicing with the international three-point line. This dude was not – I mean, he – I think he shot like 14 straight without missing and moving around. They had him moving around. So you you give that to Steph and you give that to Anthony Edwards. I don't know. If I'm a coach, I might say, Anthony Edwards, you bring the ball up. Like you we're, – we're, we're taking this offense through you because now you and LeBron in the two-man. You and Anthony, Anthony Davis in the two-man with him? Because Anthony Davis doesn't run people over like Cat. He's not going to get offensive fouls. So I do believe he could be the number one option on that team. But I I, I understand his mindset, um, you know, where he's coming from, what he's thinking, what he's been through this season, how he ascended into greatness. It makes sense. He, he's he got the most to prove, I think. He's like he and Halliburton are arguably the newest kids on the block. And I forgot about Halliburton, too. On this yep. team. Like, they're, they're, the, they're the next generation. So they they want to not be in anybody's shadow. Certainly, Ant doesn't. Halliburton might be too nice. Halliburton probably won't play as much either. Um, yeah, well, I told you that I didn't like Halliburton's game anyway. 
Like yeah. if I'm if I'm picking a point guard, give me Kyrie over Halliburton. I don't really like Halliburton's game. It, it's it's to me it's real gimmicky and it just works for the NBA. I don't know like one on one drip. Like he showed his true colors when he tried to go one on one versus the Celtics. Like he absolutely got handled and absolutely choked towards the end of those games. Like I just I don't know. That's just me. I and I'm but but also like guys with ugly shots like that. Even though he makes it, it, it goes back to my slow mo. Like I just. <laughs> <laughs> just for my eye i just i just don't like it Kyrie is smooth he's a one-on-one guard and when you already have a team like that that's honestly that's the, like the Kyrie snub feels like isaiah thomas like it has a little bit of isaiah thomas snub to it like isaiah thomas clearly was the best point guard one of the best point guards in the nba at that time just like he said he said i fit the criteria but i didn't get picked why I, I I think I'm I'm in that same boat right now. I'm like he fits Kyrie fits the criteria. He's one of the best guards, scores, creators in the league. And you take Drew Holiday and Tyrese Halliburton. I don't get it. I really mm-hmm. don't get it. Like I don't. I mean, I would have rather them taking like uh well, you can't take Kyle Filipowski because he's a Mormon. Um, who could they have taken? Who was the like well, the number one picks were out of from a different country. So you, and you didn't have a Christian Leitner type situation this year. So yeah, I don't even know if there was like, was there a college guy that technically could say they could take him? Not not a great year for that. Um, yeah, because yeah. Edie yeah. is from Canada, right? Is that I think he is? I think yeah, you're right. Yeah, so yeah like, <laughs> like there was there was no U.S. college player. Like you'd have to go all the way to the Lakers first round pick and, and connect. Like you'd have to go get him. To say, all right, we're gonna switch, but he he does he does nothing special, you know, and neither did Christian Leitner, honestly. Like, I don't think Christian Leitner should have been on that team. That should have been Isaiah Thomas. But we all know the whole story about like Michael Jordan, maybe not liking him, not wanting him on the team, blah blah. Because Magic seems to say like he didn't know that that was the situation, blah blah. But I don't know. I feel like Kyrie should have made the team. But Anthony Edwards definitely, in my opinion, number one. He is the number one option for that team. But I'd say number one option as far as like dribble, drive, create, and that guy um because who else is on there like you got Devin Booker you got Kevin Durant LeBron yeah like that's it's oh Jason Tatum right Jason Tatum's on the team too right Tatum might be your sixth man you might so, be first off the bench yeah yeah so Tatum but because because Anthony Edwards is a starter is he a starter right now or no I don't think he's a, is he a starter I I saw one one tweet from practice that said the five on the floor together were Curry um, Edwards. Okay, so Edwards was. And then who was? And then who was in the middle? Davis or no? No, it might have been Embiid. Actually, I think oh, Embiid yeah, is one of Embiid. Yep. And LeBron. And Isn't Phenomenal. Embiid French too? Embiid is, is. Um, well, he's uh, he's American. I think his his uh, lineage is is it Nigerian. Oh, maybe it is. Because I remember because remember that came up that he could have played for either. Like he mm-hmm. I remember like a couple of years ago they were talking about that. Uh Cameroon. He, Cameroon. Cameroon. Okay, yeah. yeah. And they and their team probably is not good. So he's probably like, nah, I'm not wasting, I'm not wasting my time with that team. Um, but yeah, but I'm Ron Johnson. That's Sam Ekstrom. <laughs> we we got the daily three coming up. That's three questions, three minutes each, and we'll do that after a word from our sponsors and after this quick graphic. Make sure you guys know that Sirius XM is a proud partner locked on. Just download the SXM app on whatever app market you use, Apple, Google Play, wherever you're at, the SXM app, and then search Locked On Sports Minnesota. You can get all of our videos, all of our shows. You get, or not videos, sorry, on the app. You can get all of our shows. Um, if you want our videos, you got to go to YouTube. But you can get all of our shows right there on the SXM app. And also, if you're a baseball fan, seriously, you can get the Twins hometown broadcast on the SM, S, S, SXM app as well, because uh, who knows? I mean, these twins might find some angels in the outfield at some point, uh, even though they have injuries. Maybe they'll find a way to, 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 to pull out some more wins and make the playoffs. Uh, but now we got the daily three. Take it away, Sam. Vikings question of the day. ESPN ranked the top 10 running backs in the league. Assuming you haven't seen the story yet, I'm going to ask you where you think they put Aaron Jones. There are, and just for the record, there are 10 spots. And then there are seven honorable mentions. Where do you think Aaron Jones landed? Mm, 
NFL running backs. Well, the thing about the running back, it's kind of a dying breed. So Aaron Jones came off of a Packer, but they're probably going to hate him because he's a Viking now. Seven? He is lower than seven. One more guess. He is the top honorable mention. He did not crack the top 10. So the top 10 would be from 10 to one, Travis Etienne. Yep, I get that. 10, Derrick Henry, 9, Jameer Gibbs, 8, Josh Jacobs, 7, Dijon Robinson, 6. Interesting. Jonathan Taylor, 5, Saquon Barkley, 4, Nick Um, Chubb, 3, Brees Hall, number 2, and Christian McCaffrey, number 1. You know what? After you say that, I, I get it. Like after you say those names, like it's, it's one of those things where Aaron Jones got to prove himself, show and prove, show show the world that you are one of the top ten backs. But with that list, I, I think that is if he's the top honorable mention, I get it because you you just name some names and names when you talk about running back. Like uh, li- talk when you listed every single running back, I was trying to think in my head: is there anybody? The only person I would say probably could be Bijan Robinson, but Bijan Robinson is an absolute weapon. And so he's just young and we haven't seen what he can fully be in the NFL. Um, so I, I totally get that. So that, that makes sense. I don't know. You, you, you can't, yeah, you can't really put him in front of any of those guys like Derek Henry, even though he's towards the end, he's still with Derek Henry. Um, but yeah, what do you got next? Yeah. Next up, um, Jordan McLaughlin, the last remaining wolves free agent signed with Sacramento. So of the three free agents, the wolves had Kyle Anderson, Mm-hmm. Monty Morris, Jordan McLaughlin, they signed zero of them, Ron. Are you surprised that they brought back none of their free agents? Um, Not really, to be honest. I'm not. Like, I, I wasn't too – I mean, you know that. I've said that all season. I wasn't too – like, I thought the Monty Morris bit, I thought they might have bought him back as a potential. But if he's looking at other teams having him as a true backup and he knows, like, I have no chance. Same with Jordan McLaughlin. He's like, look, I can go to Sacramento maybe and, and probably, you know, have that. Because where did – um. Where did DeMar DeRozan go? Did he go to Sacramento too? He did. Yeah, he yeah, went back to California. Because yep. I know I saw uh, – the only reason I knew that was because Kendrick Lamar put him in the music video mm-hmm. uh, and was saying that they didn't deserve him. He's back home now. And everybody thought he was saying D-Rose, like Derrick Rose. And he was saying D-Rose because when you see the music – you hear the song, you think D-Rose. But then when you see the music video, it's DeMar DeRozan. And so, like, when I saw that, I'm like, well, you know, he can he can be a true guard, rotation guard in that Sacramento – offense and and maybe he saw the writing on the wall that it, this is anthony edwards show they drafted the guy in the first round two guards in the first round so i think all signs pointed to both those guards so for monty morris and, and what you call it I, you know i was like uh they drafted two first round guards so those guys probably are going to get run and be on the bench especially the eighth pick overall but then when you move on and you get joe ingles compared to shlomo I like the fact that Joe Ingles can shoot the ball and he can shoot it quick and he's comfortable shooting the three. That's going to spread the floor out for Anthony Edwards. So no, I'm not, I'm not that surprised. I don't know. Are you surprised? I know you love slow-mo. I guess I I'm surprised that they didn't bring back one of them. I mean, I, I don't think McLaughlin costs too much. I don't think Monty Morris costs too much. So I I'm surprised they didn't bring back one more veteran guard because again, rookies unpredictable don't know what you're getting from dillingham and shannon right away so i thought they'd bring in one more ball handler but um they still could add a guy they still have time to do that uh one more question for you over the weekend jose miranda earned american league player of the week honors Mm -hmm. for tying a major league record with a hit in 12 straight at bats for the twins how impressive is that ron in the landscape of big streaks in sports and what is cam's uh record for hits consecutively <laughs> i don't think i've ever i've never kept track of, of hers well, well i will <laughs> say her sister but this is a u um she's at like she's 20s i think she had like 20 something in a row like it was it was crazy yeah pretty good pretty but good. That's, it's also eight u so we'll see as she gets older but when you look at that list so Walt Droppo of the Tigers in 1952, Pink, Pinky Higgins for the Red Sox in 1938, and Johnny Clean for the Cubs in 1902, Sam. 1902. It's almost 1800s. 1902. So that is really in the landscape of pitchers, performance, speed, size, everything. Because when you think about back then in 02, 38, 52, like 52, maybe it was starting to get some curves in there, but 02 and 38, there was straight fastballs. 
fastballs, maybe some change-ups, maybe a slight curve, but nothing like, I mean, we're seeing guys now throw all kinds of ridiculous pitches. You, you see Paul Skeens coming to league. Could you imagine if Paul Skeens was pitching in the 1930s or 40s, throwing 106 miles an hour, 101 miles an hour consistently? Like those dudes wouldn't know what to do with the bat. <laughs> the technology of the bat has changed. You know, like that's the reason why they changed it. And they they allow guys now to not cork it, but to have like a a, a bigger barrel and, and, and a different grip so that they can, you know, so it doesn't vibrate as much and so on and so forth. Pitchers are just getting better and better and better. So to do this in this landscape of sports, the speed in which some of these pitches are coming out, the, the, the angles, and then also to fight off some of the umps. Like the fact that we're seeing that little square on TV, and I get it. The umps mm-hmm. can't see that on TV. But we're seeing that on TV and the zones are being missed and they're still being called strikes. So you got to not only defend the zone and make sure you don't get punched out and you didn't deserve to be punched out. That's what's going to be interesting with this streak, too. Uh, and I'll let you go before we get out of here. But mm. imagine if he gets punched out on a pitch that's not a strike and we can all see it and it ends his streak. Like it just ends it, it ends it at 12, like his 13th at bat, which a 13 is an unlucky number. But it's not mm-hmm. because my daughter wears 13. So I don't believe in that. But could you imagine that Sam is 13th at bat? He gets punched out on a like a like a Jose. What was his? What was his dude? The Angel, Jose, Angel Jose Hernandez. Miranda? Oh, oh, no, Angel, Angel Hernandez. Yeah, Angel, yeah, yeah, yeah. Angel Hernandez type of call where it's clearly like out the zone in the dirt or something, and he punches him out. And it, the like, oh my, God, I couldn't imagine what would happen. But yeah, Sam, like I just thought about that. Yeah, it's just the, the scope of. But could you imagine that? Could you imagine if he gets punched out and didn't do anything? Like it's not his fault. Yeah. Yeah, I, I remember there was a, and this is before even replay, there was a pitcher who had a perfect game robbed from him on a bad call at first base, and they couldn't review it. And that's still, I still see that clip pop up from now and then. But I mean, the, the Miranda thing. Oh, is that the one where the guy catches it and then I'm called safe and everybody kind of like, yeah, kind of does the like, what? And like falls to the ground almost. Yeah. I think I've yep. seen that. Yeah. Or like, yeah, look like, what do you, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. It is, it is what it is. Like, that's, that's why they added the technology. That's what they've added. You know, like it's going to get like everybody's talking about the chip in football, like put a chip in football. I don't want to do that because I think that's getting a little too like you're, you're taking away the, the especially for the betters. Like you're taking away some of the like, oh, bad beats or oh, yes, they missed this call. So I won. <laughs> I won my parlay. But yeah, I mean, they're showing the Jose Miranda stats right now, like, you know, 2022, 125 at bats, a 268 average. It dipped in 2023, only played 40 games a 211 average, and now he's at a 324. So he's just seeing the ball. He's seeing the ball. His on-base percentage is up. His slugging percentage is at 529. He's got nine home runs in 71 games, whereas in 125 games, he had 15 home runs. So, you know, his RBIs are up. Everything's up. So he's feeling it, and that's the thing. It's confidence. When you get to the plate and you're confident, you see it looks like a beach ball, you're going to hit the ball. By the way, I'm looking forward to the receiver coming out this week. I can't wait. Mm. I can't wait. So we'll have to talk about that. At some point, maybe next week, once we all dive dive into it and, and see what we think of it, then we can bring that up on the next Ron Johnson Social. Make sure you guys tune in for that. But I'm Ron Johnson, Sam Mextrum. Thank you guys for joining us on the Ron Johnson Show. Make sure Locked On Sports Minnesota. You can get it 24-7 on YouTube. So make it your first watch. Make it your first listen. Get your favorite Minnesota sports shows around the clock. It's Vikings, Wild Wolves, Twins, Gophers, and Lynx at all hours of the day. I want to thank you guys. Have a great one.